this video, I want to look at an example problem of using uh, the conservation of energy uh, in order to uh, evaluate a situation. So the setup for this problem is that a person is walking along and a stone falls out of the sky and hits the ground. Now you don't know where this came from, we don't really know anything about it. However, you observe that you believe the stone was traveling at about 65 uh, miles per hour when it struck the ground. You have very powerful uh, ability to determine velocities uh, even when you're surprised by something falling out of the sky. You weigh the stone, you find out it weighs about a pound, uh, and you're kind of curious now, how high did this fall, up, uh, fall from? Did it come from an airplane? Did it get dropped from a building? Where did it come from? So we're going to use the conservation of energy to formulate a, an answer to this problem. So our basic conservation of energy equation is T1 plus U from 1 to 2 equals T2. So we have to think about what we actually know in this problem. Remember that T1 is the kinetic energy at some initial state. U is the work done on this object or the system um, from time state 1 to state 2. And T2 is the kinetic energy at state 2. So we might need to make some assumptions in this problem. And the first assumption we might need to make is that the stone starts from some initial height uh, with, a, with zero velocity. So it's either pushed out of a building, falls out of an airplane, we'll, we'll say initial vertical velocity of zero, uh, or somewhat, somehow otherwise comes to be falling towards the earth. We're also going to assume that the only work being input to the system is gravity acting on the stone, causing it to fall. And then finally, uh, that when it strikes the ground, it's just traveling at some velocity, which we have observed hopefully correctly to be 65 miles per hour. So if we think about how these assumptions get applied to our system, we can say that, well, we're assuming that that initial condition uh, is starting with a zero velocity. So that means that our initial energy is going to be zero. We're assuming that our final condition, the kinetic energy represented by the system, is, is contained within its velocity. So we know that the equation for that is one half mv squared. And the work done on the system by gravity is our gravitational potential energy equation, mgh. So we can rewrite this equation then as mgh equals one half mv squared. Right away, we note that there's an m or mass in both sides of the equation. So we can go ahead and cross those out because they will cancel each other out. And Gravity we know, height is ultimately what we're solving for, and velocity we've, we've made a guess at, at 65 miles per hour. Now, 65 miles per hour isn't a particularly useful uh, unit for this. Normally, uh, we're gonna express that in something more standard, like uh, feet per second. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that conversion by multiplying by 5280, which is feet per mile and dividing by 3600 seconds per hour. We can see that my uh, units work out here to feet per second and I get 95 and a third feet per second. So back to my equation, I'm going to substitute in what I know 32.2 feet per second squared times height equals one half feet per second squared. Now, if I go ahead and divide this across, I can solve and find that I get an H of 141.1 feet being my units here. So, probably not pushed out of an airplane, right? And not quite high enough. Could have been something that came uh, off of or, or out of a building uh, in this example. But here what we've done is we've used the conservation of energy to say, let's convert a potential energy to a kinetic energy and see what that allows us to do. Thank you.